we're in another episode of Underrated Success. I'm your host, PJ Young. Today, we got my man, Wesley Platt. How you doing, my brother? I'm doing all right. How are you doing? You know, everything is good with me. You know, it's been a long week, but I'm good. <laughs> it's without... on Thursday, Fib. I know. <laughs> I know. And tomorrow is Friday. Tomorrow is Friday. Payday. We all like that. You know what day I like better than Fridays, though? When it's the pay week Friday. The pay week Friday, because it's every other week. So the pay week Friday is that Friday. How do you get to the point where you don't worry about payday? Bro, we, we both trying to get there. So we're in the bottom bracket. <laughs> <laughs> we're, both, we're, both looking, so, we're both in the bracket. We're looking forward to the payday. I like to look forward to it every day. Get to the point where we don't even <clears throat> worry about payday. On a serious note, though, you know, I was driving in today and I started thinking about like the old school. We've been friends for a long time. It's been what? Since high school, what? How yeah, long? How many friends? 20 plus years, 22 years. How many people stayed friends since high school? It's not not a lot. Like close friends where you, I could hit you up two in the morning. You right. hit me. You hit me up. When you ever hit me morning. up at two in the morning? Nah, I'm saying I, I know that I could if this I dude needed fall to. Asleep. I know I, I definitely fall, fall asleep. Yeah. But I know if I needed to, I could. That's that's my point. Let me and make sure you up now. <laughs> to. Oh no, nah, I'm definitely up now. Wes fall asleep like that. Yeah, nah. I've been, it, was, it was an I, issue. I've been by turning around. He was like, <laughs> I said, this dude is out. <laughs> oh, man. But uh, I was driving in and just thinking at our age, we've lost a lot of people. Certainly have. You know what I'm saying? So just talk about your upbringing, where you're from, for the people that don't know. Obviously, I know who you are, where you at. I mean, most people that know me, they know I grew up in Jamaica Plain, Boston, 02130. You almost uh, forgot your zip. Nah, man. I was I was spacing it out, making sure that I made it clear, you know? <laughs> we got I know we got a couple guys from the from the 02130 that's you know, we we, we wanna make sure that we're saying it right. Um but yeah, nah, I grew up with Jamaica Plain. Um I mean we met really at the Boys and Girls Club in in Dorchester and Blue Hill Lab with my father's director. We used to play ball, hope, you know, that's how, you know, we stayed out of trouble. We yeah. we lost people and around our age, you know, in our age bracket, they, they got into trouble. Um, we were going to get into some of our teammates that weren't in trouble, but, you know, we lost them just for health reasons, mm -hmm. you know. So that's that's just as sad. Um, but, yeah, man. Um, With the, so you play ball, obviously. We play ball mm -hmm. to, to stay out of trouble. But you ever have that time where you could have went left when you, sh you know? I mean, for me, honestly – the thing for me, the blessing for me was, like I just said, my father, he was the director of the Boys and Girls Club mm. when I was like, I was like 11 to 12 years old. So I never really, I never really had, I was never like 13, 14, mm. 15, 16 without somewhere that I had to be at. Right. You know, I had to be at the Boys and Girls Club after school. Um, and, you know, he was going to know if I wasn't there, he would have he known. All the staff knew him, they knew me. Right. So if I wasn't where I was supposed to be, he was going to know quick, fast. Um, play, so yeah. yeah, so he yeah, there was no he there was no shorts taken with him. So uh, <laughs> I can't I can't say that you know I had much of an opportunity to take it to the left, um, like you know like many too many you know of our peers really had, and even kids today they they have far too many opportunities, you know, time that's not uh, unstructured time you know where they're unaccounted for they and too much time on and their they, hands. you know bad decisions are too easy to make right you know right so the boys and girls club. See, me, I wasn't a boys club kid. Yeah. A lot of people were, you know. I tried. I remember I was up in um, New Hampshire or mm -hmm. something, and they wanted me to play um, floor hockey. <laughs> you got to play all the games, man. You I can't, played the game. We, you, know, you know, we love hoop, man. We love basketball. You know, we want to get in the pool in the summertime. You got to play all the games. I was actually, I was good at table tennis, pool, <laughs> billiards, man, because I, I had to play it all. Like I said, I had to be in there, so. Yo, you I know. used to bend my hockey stick. <laughs> Like crazy, like try to get a crease so I could just pop it up in the air. Yeah. So I was the bad kid. I wasn't playing the rules. I was really trying to hit people with that little round with, ball. Oh yeah, with the with it the wasn't a puck. The, it oh not nah, the raw ball. Yeah, the plastic ball. Yeah, yeah. That's how. So Dorchester at that time, you know, when we was growing up, mm -hmm. it was a rough. Where the boys and girls club is a rough neighborhood. Yeah, mid to late nineties. Yeah, it was definitely. Uh, I mean, you know, we had Franklin Field, Franklin Hill projects. You know. 
there was definitely a lot of gang activity, mm. you know, right there. You know, I mean, the, the, just the placement of, of the Boys and Girls Club, there's certain times where I, I wondered if it was a strategic placement or if it was, you know, just wasn't the smartest placement. But, um, you know, as time went on, I understood that, you know, it may have really been a strategic placement because it was a, it was really sort of a neutral zone. Right. You know, um, there was definitely, like I said, gang member, they had issues with each other. They were in close proximity, but, you know, they, were, they didn't really bring it into the Boys and Girls Club. Right. Which, as I, as I grew up and I really, you know, understood it more, like how easily things could really pop off pretty yeah. much anywhere. The fact that it never really happened in the Boys and Girls Club, I was, you know, I was surprised. I was, I was proud. I know my father was proud. Um, you know, I was just blessed, you know. So you had both your parents, right? Living yeah. With you. Yep. So just talk about having that dynamic because there's a lot of people from the inner city that don't have both parents. So just go, I just mean, go it, into that. It's funny bit. because I used to get clowned for it, actually. Um, Which is why. I, I mean, yeah, you know, it was, <laughs> I mean, I never, like I said, getting clowned for, you know, it, it, it is what it is. But, I mean, you know, at the same time, I, you know, they were a little... You know, I don't want to say they were jealous, but at the same time, you know, that's 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 how I, how I grew to to look at it. Like, you mm-hmm. know, that's it's some I had something that they wanted. You feel right. me? I had both parents in the same home. You know, what I'm saying with me and my siblings, my sisters. So, you know, people make fun of it, and it's like, you know, I I felt a little bad or awkward at first, but then it's like, you know, when I under when when I get older, get into high school, and I understand like they they were raised by a single family, yeah. single parent. So they didn't have that dynamic, and that's sort of why you know they wanted to put down, mm. put that dynamic down, because it's something that they didn't have. So it's like you know, um, I mean, that was like I said, it's blessing. I, I I'm blessed for it every day, especially now, understanding you know how rare it really is, mm. how rare it was back then. It still is. Uh, still, it still is now. I mean, yeah, you know, everybody. I mean, it's it's, it's definitely a rarity. Still a rarity. Um, but. It's a blessing. It's a blessing to have both parents in the home. See, me, I had both parents to a certain you know certain age, and then mm-hmm. they split. Mm-hmm. Uh, but a lot of people's parents get lost to the penitentiary, or they go the drug route. Mm-hmm. So you know, it took me a while to talk about a little bit about my story and, and how I was brought up. Is that you know, my mother she got locked up and went to jail mm-hmm. for a while, mm-hmm. and for a while, it took me a while to hurt it to to get over the pain or, yeah. or the embarrassment. But it made me realize that a lot of people, my story is not unique. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It really isn't. So to talk about it, someone that could relate to it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and in high school, I moved up to New Hampshire. I was yeah. out. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So it a was... lot of people don't realize why I left. You yeah. know what I mean? But now that I'm older, I could talk about it a little bit. Mm-hmm. And my mom got locked up. You know. Um, so my story is not unique, but yeah. I was, it was hurt, hurtful to hear. And that's probably a lot of people, um, when they're younger, they don't want to talk about their story because they don't know where their father's at or, mm-hmm. or they don't know who their father is or, or where their, their mother is. or you know. So that's probably why a lot of people were a little jealous or envious, some of them anyway. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean like you said, nobody really wants to talk about Situation of hurt, you know. Pain. No one wants to talk about so pain like that. Especially that's, if they're not over it. Exactly. Uh, especially you know something that they had no control over. You know, it hurt them deep. You know. I mean, that's just that's that's tough. So, talk about because I remember in in um, when you're young, you had a little handle, you got a little jump shot. <laughs> yeah. So talk about a little high school basketball and, and how it is just being in the inner city because I didn't go to school in the city. Mm-hmm. So that's something that I always wanted, though. Yeah. Like the close knit, the rivalries, and how everybody is so close in the city. Like I mm-hmm. always wanted that. You okay. Know, but never nah, got that. I mean, I can't say I went to school in the city. I went to North Cambridge Catholic, so like I was, I had, I did my school was in Cambridge. But like you said, playing just playing in the city day day in day out. Um, I mean, it started off I mean, like we had ADSL at the Boys and Girls Club. So we you went to school in Cambridge, Mass, Cam- and that's yeah. known for like Harvard, you yeah, know, yeah, Harvard yeah, yeah. University, yeah, MIT, Harvard, MIT, yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, but you know, playing day in day out, pick up stuff like that. That was in the city, um, and like like mainly at the Boys and Girls Club. Mm-hmm. That's where I was every day. Um, I mean, yeah, started off started off with a little handle, and it's actually when we played together at YBC when um, when I actually. Convert, I got converted to a shooting guard, right. and I had to spend those two weeks in the gym, you know, <laughs> thousand shots a day to become a shooting guard, and it actually worked out for me. 
um, now. Um, but yeah, it was you know it, in the inner city. I mean, I mean we grew up, you know we played played every day. We wanted to play as much as we could, right? Uh, for various reasons, people wanted to play. Like I said, to stay out of the streets, stay out of trouble. They wanted to play to get better. They had dreams of you know getting out of the hood. Going to going to going to college, going pro, going you know doing whatever, just open, giving themselves opportunities, you know to to live to live a better life than you know is really given to them. So, why do you think that people try to get out the hood just to come back? Because you you know a lot of people leave for a while, but they always revert back. Not always, but I mean, you know. I think I think I think it's there's two sides to it. Uh, I think that. I know for myself, um, you know, you wanna you wanna come back to the hood because you want to, you know, you wanna uplift, you know, the 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 youth that are coming up community, behind you, right. the community, you know, the youth that are in, the, in the same community that are coming up behind you. You know what I'm saying? Like you understand firsthand, you know what what could you know steer them the wrong way? How mm. easily one one bad decision, you know, because they have they were unstructured for an hour or two hours, right, yeah. can turn their entire life around. So you want to come back to the community, you know, if you make it out and you know you do you're doing great things. You want people they want to come back to the community for you know the reason being able to help people, help mm. you know the next generation, help people because you know there's people there's people's kids that we know. You know what I'm saying? Like right. it's people that we knew. It's their kid that you know. It could be that their child. You know that that's you know they they're on the edge. You know yeah. they could go one way or the other. You want to to be able to to help them stay on the right path is a huge huge thing. Um, and I think that's why I just think I think that's probably why people you know especially from Boston they go out. You know they go to college even if they go pro they they're gonna come back. Yeah. You know they're gonna look to do something positive in the community help it out. Yeah, I, I feel like, you know, my upbringing was a little dysfunctional, you know what I mean? Like like a lot of other families, but I feel like, you know, we had dysfunctional love. Mm -hmm. So you can hate, or, or I don't want to say hate, but you can dislike your brothers and sisters yeah. or your cousins or, yeah. or your, you know, the discipline, but you still love them. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Is, like for me, yeah. uh, when, when my dad moved to Bermuda, mm -hmm. my mom was up in New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. So for me, I had to make a choice. I lived with my pops for a long time. Yeah. So I moved to Bermuda with my dad. Mm -hmm. And they didn't, I, if I wanted to be a rower or, or do sailing uh, or, or play cricket, cricket. You know, not knocking, you know, Bermuda sports. Shout out to Bermuda. Yeah, we shout but, out Bermuda, uh, yeah. But the, it wasn't for me at that I was time. I about to say those sports is not what we I was wish that I would have stayed my butt in Bermuda. Do you? Because I would have had a whole island a country back in me i would have been the best player well, on there i, mean, I think well, I that, well yeah actually you know for in that regard for sure so i would have um, been their staple they would have pushed me and had a wave behind that's me. true but you, you look, know you're looking at it like that you definitely would have had a whole island behind you yeah but i got up out of there you know so and then that's when i went up to new hampshire instead of going um to mass i went to school in new hampshire yeah, yeah, yeah. and you know that's when i felt the difference you mm -hmm. know, between inner city and city because, mm -hmm. you know, just because I didn't go to school or, or people, they might not know me until I started hooping and yeah. getting better. But I have roaches in my house, yeah. government cheese. Just because yeah. you're in New Hampshire doesn't, doesn't mean you don't mean, have yeah, but the, 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 Doesn't mean you have everything. Yeah. You know what I'm so saying? Don't I, mean you I got remember, a, big, a big old house and exactly. big old yard or a pool in your exactly. backyard. You know what I'm saying? You don't, everything is not gravy. No. Just because you're in everywhere. New Hampshire. That's exactly. From, you know, you know, lower income, they have that in New Hampshire, they believe it, it or not. They, yeah. People have it all over the, in the states in the country. But I remember opening the cabinet and roaches falling out mm -hmm. into my cereal. Mm. And I used to tell my mother, don't get sugar smacks or yeah. golden crisp because I they can't decipher be the difference they, between yeah. the roaches or the cereal. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're eating one of them. It joy. sounds crazy, but <laughs> somebody can relate to that. You know what I'm saying? Plenty of people can relate to that. You um, know, government block cheese yeah. that doesn't milk. How do you get cheese that don't, don't, don't melt? We put it in, the, in yeah. the microwave for five minutes. It's still, still, still straight. It's still, you can use that as a candle. And it's Come still on, good. man. That's, yeah, that's, so we can, like a lot of people can relate to certain things. For sure. I hope that a lot of people wouldn't be able to because that means you were fortunate yeah. enough you know, to have a different upbringing. Mm -hmm. You know, so it, 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 EB, I was around, like growing up with our age, mm -hmm. we had real food stamps. Yeah, yeah, the stamps. Like food yeah. stamps was actual paper, like yeah. money. Yeah. You didn't have the uh You had an EBT card. card. Like it's like now. a debit card. It's like a credit card. People would go to the store. They buying the whole store. My older brother, we used to go to the grocery store. My mother used to send us for milk mm -hmm. or whatever it was. 
So he used to go to the counter, and I'd be like, I'm not going up there with you because you got a 50. <laughs> you, you, got, know, you got a or whatever. You got I'm a big bill. They'd be like, anyone got change for a food I stamp? I'm like, nah, that's embarrassing. Said, yo, <laughs> what? Whose is that? Right. So, you know, the upbringings are different, but they're the same. Mm-hmm. So, Wes, t- talk about um, education and your family, how your parents kept you on the, the straight and narrow as far as um, education and going forward with that. Yeah, well, my father, um, you know I mean? he He's a proud BC ego, talks about it all the time. He got- Boston College? He, yeah, B, yeah, Boston College. He got, he got paraphernalia, man, um, you know, so he was very big on- on all of us, you know, my my older sister, she went to Yale, so that you know, I was a lot of pressure there. Your older sister went to Yale. Yeah, man, she she went to Ivy Yale. So that's what I'm saying. So my Crazy. father, he was on all of us. Yeah, you know, to uh, to ensure that you know, got through high school, got to college, got through college, you know. So I mean, it wasn't just, even a it thought. Wasn't, nah, it was there was there was no there was no second thoughts. It wasn't you know what if saying? you it, graduated. Yeah, high there was school. no yeah there was there was no uh, no other options. Honestly. I feel like the youth they they have too many. Options now. Too many options to do. Like too many parents things. Parents are friends. Yeah. Like it's like parents want to be friends because they, you know, they don't want to be as confrontational. Right. Uh, I mean, it's too, it's too easy. I think nowadays it's too easy for things to go south within a family, right? Just off of one confrontation. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Whether, no matter why it happened, if it was something, you know, the parent was, you know, in the right. Yeah. The confrontation comes about, you mm-hmm. know, something happens, you know, things can go south for that entire family. So I think that's that's in the forefront of parents' minds now. Right. Uh, especially, you know, parents have had experience with the system. Um, so, you know, they, they, they don't want any parts of that. Uh, so, yeah, they, you know, they want to try to be more of a friend to the youth than, the, than to the child than, than their actual parent. So and high school, wrong way. graduating high school was not even a question. You had nah, to graduate. Yeah, nah, there was, there was no, there was, oh, high school, there was no sorry. options. It was, you graduate high school, you know what I'm saying? You got to you gotta have a college pay. And, you know, I mean, I was, like I said, I was fortunate enough, you know, we were both fortunate enough, mm-hmm. you know, we were, we were going on to play basketball at the college level. Uh, so we had a few options, you know, to, to sift through. Um, but it was definitely it. It was the only thing that was. So your happen. pops being involved with the boys and girls club. Mm-hmm. Did you ever do uh, internships or, or going into into school, or you I, already had? Because there's a lot of people that don't know. I actually did an internship through my high school. Like my high school, the senior, the second half of senior year mm-hmm. at my high school, right? Is an internship. You got to do an inter. You have to find mm-hmm. find a um, place. I mean, they have a, little, a listing of you know. Uh, businesses that that have worked with the school, yeah. you know, over the years. But I, I did an internship at um at a hotel, you know, not far from the school. But you got discounts for the second. <laughs> nah, you man, get no discount. I, I I wasn't even thinking <laughs> like that. Man. High school, saw senior high school. We, you know, we That's had the senior you had, both, you had both parents. We they were like, nah. <laughs> like, listen, we already know what you're going to do. Mm-hmm. Just finish this out, and then we're going on to the next chapter. And that's really what it was. You know, I was thinking. I was never a kid that used to sneak out. Yeah, nah. you know, some people have snuck out the house. I just, I was like, you know, nah, man, I don't we, have anywhere to go. I don't have play, any money, none of that. <laughs> we was playing, we was playing board games as a family, man. That's another thing that um, a couple of my boys they they used to make fun of me, and I was like, I actually liked it. You know what I'm saying? We'd be in the house. Yeah, all I wasn't five with the board games because I used to get mad. <laughs> well, yeah, like, you get Monopoly you get and all that. Lose. Nah, I'm Monopoly good. took a while. I mean, I think we only played that once or twice because it took a long time. You know, we're all competitive. You go around Bullwalk like and Park yeah, Place and I land on yeah, it. It's a problem. And you, and you have it? Oh, yeah, man. I need I'm, all, I'm, I need I all that fight. money and it's not, you know, and that's it. Um, but nah, I mean, yeah. So, like I said, my father, I mean, my mother too, you know, she, um, she graduated college as well. So, you know, they were both very keen on, you know, all of us mm-hmm. graduating high school, going to college, and, you know, and all that. So, it, like I said, there was really no other option. So, now, now we'll, we'll talk about high school. We talk, We spoke about that already. So, as far as getting ready for college, did you have any? Did you face any adversity up until this point? I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, I was talking about adversity. Just, I mean, I was hurt. We lost in the state tournament. We we, we were favored to win no, the state No, not so much division. the sports route. Okay, just life in, in general. Life. I mean, yeah. I mean. I can't. I can't say it was. You know. I mean. I. You know. You run into. You got fights. You have. You know. Mm-hmm. Issues with with peers and this and that. But like I said, everything for me, 
it was a blessing, you know, a very big blessing that, you know, like I said, everything was structured, you know. Yeah. I can't I can't say that, you know, there was a lot of instances, you know, where I was in a lot mm -hmm. of grave danger, anything like that. I mean, I was, you know, always under the eye of pretty much my father. And then when I left the boys and girls, I was with my mother, my, my family. So, um, I mean, there was times I was with my boys, but, you know, we never... Right, I never, you know, got out of hand. Yeah, I was, I was, I wasn't the kid. I, I never, um, I wasn't in any gang activity. Mm -hmm. I didn't um, rep a block yeah. or anything. I always rep myself and my family. That yeah. was the biggest thing for me to represent because, you know, when people saw me, mm -hmm. I was a representation of my family. So yeah. I made sure that I always. That was the other thing for me. A lot of a lot of people knew my father. Like I didn't understand how many. Anyway. As I was saying, I didn't understand how many people knew my father until I was like thirteen to fourteen mm -hmm. years old, right? And I'm, you know, we're going to other boys and girls clubs, cool, you know, um, we're going just around, just around the city. And they're like, oh yeah, Alan Platt's son. Yeah. Like yeah, Alan Platt's son. I thought that I, you know, people knew me because of me, it's things that I was doing <laughs> on the basketball court, or Psych you know, what I'm saying they were around. They're like, yo, yeah, Alan Platt's son. So yeah. it's like, you know, even if I ever even had the thought, if, if even if I wasn't in the Boys and Girls Club, you know, what I'm saying, if there was an instance I wasn't actually in the building, whatever, and I had a, a second thought about you know doing something, mm -hmm. it's like, nah, man. Everybody, every literally everybody knows my father. You know what I'm saying? Everybody I run into, they, that's the first thing they said. So it was just a reinforcement of don't even think about it, let alone try it. It's not worth it. It's not going to happen. I already know this answer, and I, I don't really like it. What college you go to? Uh, you know I went to UMass Lowell, man, any 10. I got my practice shorts on. I didn't know if we was going to be- I don't care about be, the practice shorts. <laughs> I didn't know if we was going to be- uh, I didn't care about the we, practice shorts. We was going to be in the-, in the, in the <laughs> Let's get a little. We're gonna have the angle with the with the shorts with the whole. Just real quick, head. just to go off topic. <laughs> it's not off topic. I used to call y'all the mud ducks. Well, the you, mud ducks. Yeah. Oh, well, the river hawks. Yeah, nah, that's cool. them river the, hawks. The mud ducks. But anyway, you I ain't even heard that one before. That's yeah, that's a new one. That was on my me. secret. That, that's just secret. That's what's up. <laughs> but uh, you went to UMass Lowell. UMass obviously. Lowell, I went, yeah. to, I went to Southern, Southern New Hampshire. Hampshire. Yeah, and we were we were I guess rivals, but it, it was always good yeah. to know. That I had a friend that went to UMass, yep, so, yep. Um, that we were successful successfully in college. Mm -hmm. So talk about what you uh, studied in college, what went into your mind, because I feel like a lot of the youth, I didn't know what the heck I was going to study. Yeah. Going to I did sports management because I had sports in yeah. front of me. I was like, oh, okay. I'm going to do sports management. Yeah. And came to find out that wasn't it. That wasn't it. Not at all. <laughs> it was not the way. Shout out to sports management, <laughs> majors, but it wasn't for me. <laughs> it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't a straight line to the money. Now, I mean, I went to UMass Lowell. I mean, we studied sociology. Uh, my father, he had the same major. You know, I saw how successful he was. Um, directing the Boys and Girls Club, something he's that that was one thing that I always looked up to. Like, and that was honestly another reason that I I never even thought of doing anything, you know, just out, out of the line because I saw, you know, I saw him. I'm yeah. seeing him every day. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing him, you know, running an entire building, an entire right. business, you know, every day, and that's something that I aspire to. Um, so yeah, so I talked to him about, I spoke to him, you know, about his. His major, you know, what he studied in school, how he ended up at the Boys and Girls Club, you know. So when he say he studied sociology, um, you know, that's, that's that's the path that I took as well. Um, I knew that. What is soci sociology? I mean, sociology. Sociology. It's, it's, sociology. <laughs> sociology. sociology. It's like sociology. psychology, but it's, you know, it's <laughs> study the, uh, humans, man. Um, you know, just talk how to. How to speak to people, how to work with yeah. people, how to work it's with adults, how to too. work exactly, how to work with adults, how to work with children, how to work, you know, with everybody, talking them through through issues, working through things, um, you know, being able to just help push them in the right direction, things like that. Um, you know, that's I that's don't what really want to dig into basketball. <laughs> But we gotta. We go got there to. Real quick. I mean, that's that's what. I gotta get that's some our off life. my chest. Basketball is our uh, life. Uh, honestly, I mean, no, it's not mine anymore. It's not okay. Not. I, mean, I don't. I'm not to playing, this point. I don't play you know, basketball until, ever. Now nah, you don't play basketball. Now we play ball. Listen, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you. We're not gonna lie to the up. people. We're not gonna lie to the people. We still play ball. I'm gonna tell you what memory comes up. What's the memory? When I think of UMass Low. What's the memory? Well, there's a couple of them, but the one that comes to mind is we lost to you all. Yeah. In the conference finals. Conference finals. 
In the in the in the, the the conference tournament final, I believe it was the conference, the conference tournament, tournament final. Yes, yeah, so we See, was. You put in, you know, no, I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to make sure put, that you, you know we took gasoline talking. on the nah, fire. I didn't it's know if right. it was the regular season chips or was it the tournament chips. You we, know, you know what, what you won. We won. We won in both. That's what I'm saying. All we right, won the so regular season chip and we won the tournament. That's what I was is, trying. This to. is my story. Go ahead. So I'm listening. I'm not. I, I'm not going to go into specific player <laughs> names, but this dude hit a hit a step back three before. it. People uh, were doing step back. Yeah, threes. there's a couple. We okay. Dude was from Israel. Oh he was yeah, nice. I know. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, okay. We both know who that. We is. were we were up. Y'all were up. If we would have gave him the two or yeah, fouled, or fouled, we win the game. This dude hits a hits step the, back the, three. The three ball. Lights out. I remember that. Game's over, right? You all. The the worst part part for me was y'all was crip walking in the middle of the well, court. You, you know, back then, man. Oh 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 three oh four, man. That was big thing. You know Yo. what I'm saying? Like that was this, that was the celebration. They're doing it all over the place. So, you know, we won the won the championship. You know, everybody's feeling themselves. That's the first thing Yo. that came came to mind. I actually, I'm trying to remember which teammate it was. Which teammate of mine it was. We don't need to go specifics, but I see that the started whole it. Team. They, 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 yo, because it only took one of us. Because that's how it was. I, mean, I wanted to go. In I'm there sure that's how it was. Y'all up, y'all. I'm not. <laughs> I'm even sure lie. that's how it was in your locker room too, man. You got one of your guys going on doing something. Everybody's, you know, they're gonna you jump into the was? same thing. You know what it was like in our locker room? What was it like? You hear that silence? It was silent. Well, That's I mean, how it that was, was in my locker room. It was a good game. I mean, honestly, you know, you got to, it's not like it was a blow. It was a good game. It took a tough shot. That was, I'm picturing the shot. It was a tough shot. It still hurts. Like, we, we had to, we watched film. We had to, we actually had to watch film the next day, you know, um, you know, because coaches, you were preparing for, we were both made the NCAA tournament. So, yeah, you know, we we're did. preparing. We still went, yeah. Um, and you know we had film the next day. It was like look at the shots. Like yo, that was a really a tough shot in that moment when we were down. You know it was crazy. So that's why I feel like you know it was easy for the emotions to take over. One of our teammates started the crib. Shout block, out to you, Matt. And that was the got a shout out you, Matt. So got a shout out to New Hampshire too. You know everybody, y'all y'all were the school that really that that pushed us the most. You know what I'm saying those those first two years. It was good battles. Uh definitely good battles. So as far as you know, we know the the sports end of it, but you in college. How how did you uh, because a lot I feel like when you go into college you don't know what you're going into right yeah so how did you make that adjustment in college academically it was getting ready for the real world it was a big adjustment honestly um, because the high school I went to was very small I mean our graduating class was like fifth less than sixty kids so you're going to, from that to a university right you know thousands of, thousands of students this is you know um, and you've got to hold yourself accountable. You know what I'm saying? Like I've like I've described, I've pretty much been structured my entire life. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Um, so when I go to the universities, you know, the structure just isn't isn't as tight. Being part of a team, you know, you got coaches accountability there, but as far as academic academia wise, like it's all it's on you. You gotta get up, get to class. You gotta do so it. So did work. you stumble at so all? Was, while nah, yeah, definitely had definitely had struggles. I mean, there's there's no doubt about that. Had 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 some struggles academically, you know, just like I said, just um you know, just with the the lack of structure, and just you know, I got myself right. But how did you was, overcome that? It was, I mean, well, there was a few heart to hearts with my father mainly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he, he's he's the one constant in my life, man. That's why it's my guy. Shout out my father, man, Alan Platt. Um, man, my sister as well. My older sister as well. You know, she's had she, she went to Yale, great, right? Yeah, she had great success. Mm -hmm. So she you been know, doing she all had, my papers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if I was smart <laughs> enough to think to about you. it, uh, but she probably it'd be yeah. If she would have actually, I would have gave her $35. agreed with it. <laughs> she would agree with it at the time, maybe. But nah, but thirty five dollars. Had hearts to hearts with, like I said, my father, my older sister, my few few you know conversations with my mother, but mainly, um, you know, my father and older sister. And you know, just, they just got me on track. They gave me, you know, things to the reminders, things that I can think about. Yeah, it was floppy disk. <laughs> we, we were in school with floppy disk. <laughs> floppy disk, man. It was, <laughs> oh man, it was crazy. Those People don't days, even know though. what that is. Don't, though. Yeah, <laughs> for real. You're not lying about that. But um, yeah. the youth now have way more resources than we had. That's that's the that's the crazy thing. It's like it's almost like they have so many resources they don't even know what to do with it. We had to go to the library. Instruct, exactly, you had to be in the library. Check you had to books. check out a book. You had to look up the end. You had to look I up the book, you check it out, read all. If, man, I don't even know if the library is even Google the same is the anymore. Library. Exactly. Google and ask Jeeves. everybody. They on their phone right now, doing everything, looking up anything, everything. Yeah, I wish we had that. Copy and <laughs> copy and paste anything. 
Um, but yeah, so so moving forward, so now now um, college is over. Mm-hmm. What's next for West Platte? I don't know. I mean, at work, like I said, what's work look like? Work is you know working with the working with at risk youth in the so city. So you work. So does your uh, what you majored in help you with that? Yeah, it does. It's direct sociology. correlation. Sociology is direct correlation. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're working with the at risk youth, working with the families. Um, I mean, it's families that we described at the top of the show. You know, it's a lot of single parent families. A lot of um, some families not even parent. Like the kids being raised by a grandparent, and yeah. being raised by an aunt or uncle. You know. Um, Which is not fair because not, grandparents yeah. already had children. Exactly. And they already and raised they, them. And they raised them. They raised them to the point that they felt they were responsible enough to have their own children. Yeah. And now they're raising that child, right? So it's definitely it's far from fair. But, you know, it's, it's something that has, you know, presented itself many times. So what's the system like? Because you at risk. I know it's a lot of DCF and, and, and of, yeah, you know, the group home DCF, foster yep, care. So yep. what does that look like? Yep. Um, I mean, that's... I mean, well, like let, I, me, let me switch the question. What does that look like from your standpoint? Because you are what they need in their life. Yeah, I mean... You from, go grocery shop. Yeah. I mean, I, we work together. Yeah, I, yeah, I know yeah. what you, you know. So, I mean, it's really just ensuring that, you know, that the youth is safe, they feel safe. You know what I'm saying? They feel safe, secure. They feel, you know, like they, they have something. They, they have food to eat. You know, they have people that they can talk to. They have yeah. things. They have support systems, right. you know, around them all day. Mm-hmm. You know, whether it's myself, whether it's, you know, the staff, you know, even even down to their peers, you know, that they, they're comfortable enough to work on the things, you know, that that have led to, you know, their hardships, things that, like, their feelings, you know, like, like you described, how much it hurts when your parent, you know, when you lose a parent for whatever reason. Yeah. Um, you know, if you... Bad decisions, even that that they made, you know, lands them in that in that situation. Um, being able to work on it, you know, if it's anger, whatever. Um, but yeah, I mean, just being able to work on it every day, day in day out. How long were you in that field for? Or are you ten still years? In still, still working? Yeah, man, ten, 10 years. years. It's pretty, yeah, it's man. So it's, I mean, it's a lot of a lot of youth out there. So one can push back and say, how can you relate to these kids if you have both parents? Uh, I and mean, that would be, you know what I mean? Everyone. I mean, like I said, I, I, my my experiences, I mean, I tell the kids straight up, my experiences are not firsthand like it happened to me. Yeah. But just like you, you know what I'm saying? You're, you're my, my my guy for for just as long. Right. Right. So, you're, so I'm looking at it from your experience. It's your mm-hmm. experience, but I know it just as well. Yeah. I didn't experience it, but right. I know it just as well. And, you know, there's hundreds of guys mm-hmm. that... That was their situation, yeah. and I, you know, playing ball with them, hanging out with them, I know their experience. Mm-hmm. I've seen the things that, that, you know, that that sort of molded them. Right. You know what I'm saying the experiences that they had. You know what I'm saying? Like I've seen phone calls. My boys on the phone with their parents. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and it's crazy because after that, does their whole mood is different. You know what I'm saying? So I've, like I said, my it's, the experience is not mine, but. I know very much about it. Well, you've been in there with them. Exactly. And, and you, you see, you know, they're, they're going to um, talk, talk a little bit about that process because I feel like people don't know the process when you once you enter the group home. Mm-hmm. They just feel like people don't want you. I mean... But that's not the case. That's not the case at all. I mean, there's there's a lot of people fighting for, you know, fighting for the kids, you know, fight, fighting the state, fighting, you know, each other. You know, yeah. sometimes kids place in the group home because the parents are, are fighting each other for custody, right. you know what I'm saying, to the point where the state has to place them while they, they sort it out. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, they, I mean, there are a lot of kids, you know, the initial, the initial thought process for the youth is usually, you know, so nobody wants them or, you know, you know, just life is against them, right? Right, but at the same, you know, we 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 look to reinforce the fact that somebody does want you, man. Yeah. You gotta, and you and more than anything else, you gotta want it for yourself. Mm-hmm. You gotta want to put yourself um, on the path of success, right? You feel that that they look up to you as far, as, or do they see you as just staff? I feel like, I mean, I, I've seen it both ways. I've seen you, you know. We work with so many kids. There's, there's definitely kids that I, I could tell, you know, they looked up to me. Yeah. Just the way, you know, I presented myself on a daily basis, where I spoke to them. Right. I uh, made sure, you know, I sp- spoke to them respectfully, you know, never cursed, never used any mm-hmm. slurs or anything like that. That's Wanted, that you know, sociology. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely part of that. Um, mm-hmm. But, yeah, so I definitely have uh, know that there were youth that looked up to me. And then at the same time, there were other youth that, you know, that they, they just weren't 
in it. And they, they looked at every staff as you're just a staff and you're just here to get paid and that's it. Now, the program that you worked for was Boston Star, correct? Correct. Now, it's typically a 45-day program. Typically, yep. Yeah. And so the, the, that's the model, yeah. I used to say it's let's see if you can act right. <laughs> let's see if you can, you know, because if you can't, they got something a different. Longer term, juvenile, yeah, exactly. You know, they got they got some longer center. term placements for you. For some, not all. Some are taken yeah. away because of you know drug addiction, yeah, exactly. and parents, and, mm-hmm. you know, fighting or, or, or abuse. Yeah. So, talk about some of the so the sexual abuse. Physical abuse, sexual abuse, neglect, so it's physical all abuse, that. all that. Yeah, so you have I mean, all of those in one home. All in one home. I mean, all boys. All boys. Nine beds. You know, nine boys. There were there were years where um, you know, it was the average of eight boys a day. Yeah. You know, and like like you just described, they're coming in for all different reasons. They've been sexually abused. They've been neglected by their mm-hmm. parents. Um. You know, they the the parents are, you know, afflicted, drug drug afflictions, drug addictions, um, you know, custody battles. So it's all different things, all different circumstances. So when they come in, they come in with a file, obviously. Oh right? yeah. Yeah. So it's without prejudice that you have to oh, care yeah. for these kids, right? I mean, yeah. No matter their attitude, it's what not, they've done, anything. All that's because just, some of them are, are sexual predators. Yeah. You know? Yeah, we've had some of those as well. And that's yeah. that's the thing. It's something that we had to be very careful with. Right. Um, you know, we got to we had to train the staff on, you know, how to how to deal with and what was a youth your position? as a child. Not to cut you out. What was your I was, ten I was, years. You ten years, be. I mean, yeah, I went to I mean I was worked up I was started working overnight shift. Don't be humble. You know, what, what, nah, what I worked overnight shift. Okay. I was program you know what I'm saying the house manager and program director. Program director. So yeah. Sociology, so, um, baby. <laughs> shout that's out cool. sociology, man. <laughs> um but yeah, it's um I mean, like I said, this so youth you came in all walks training, of life. Are you the one training staff? No, nah, I synonym? mean, not not training. I'm not doing the training myself. Yeah, I, I set up set up the trainings, um, making CPI, sure that shout out CPI. yeah, shout out CPI, <laughs> TCI, all that first aid, CPR. Yeah, that verbal um, judo, you know, because some of those kids the act verbal up. Verbal judo, you exactly. Know, you got to <laughs> judo some of them. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, like I said, all walks of life, all mm. different. You know, just so now things. you have you have uh, someone in the program that's been in there longer than forty five days, because um, I've you know I worked there for a while, mm-hmm. and if somebody passes away, how does or, or someone gets out and gets back into they go to jail or mm-hmm. something? How does that affect you? You working and having the rotation of so many? Um, uh, I mean, like like we described, it is a quick turn or turnaround. The model's forty five days. Um, you know, they say that that's, you know, the amount of time it takes, you know, to, to re, you know, to get a routine for youth right. to get a routine. The youth that's told the 17 for them to get in a, in a day to day routine. Um, we're looking to re implement them back in school, make sure they're going to school every day, um, structuring their life <laughs> for the physical <laughs> thing. Huh? But yeah, um, but now nah, you describe, you know, you you losing parents, yeah. um, you know that's gonna be that's gonna be a big setback for anybody. You know, you sure. lose your parent, it's not, you know, that's 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 no small thing uh, for anybody, successful or not, you know, stable or not, right? Yeah. So that's definitely, you know, that's the, probably the biggest setback that we've had. You know, some some youth have to deal with, but you know, we support them as much as we can. We we'll attend the funeral, we'll help them attend the funeral yeah. if we can. Um, you know, like I said, support them everywhere, any every way, any way possible. Like I said, to make them understand that you know they have supports, and you know they they can feel good about themselves, and you know, they got to move forward. And you know the good thing the good thing about this is they have programs all over the country. Yeah, they do. It's not just Boston, Massachusetts. Mm-mm. You know, I'm sure they have that in New York. Yeah, they got it everywhere. They got or Chicago, yeah, any major city. I'm sure they got programs. Multiple. Um, that that's Multiple. ran a little differently, mm-hmm. but the goal is the same. Goal's the same. The, the the model is very similar as well. You know, whether it's forty five days, um, you know, even ninety days, because the, the models are going to be similar uh, throughout the country, and you know, mm-hmm. the way the way they run. Yeah. Much. So, well, I mean, it's a blessing, you know, to have someone like you to come in there and actually want to devote your time. Mm-hmm. Then give back to to um, the community. Absolutely, because it's not easy working in that environment. It's not easy. I you mean, know, because <laughs> they don't understand that you're there to help them. Exactly. You know, so and the, the, they don't understand. You know that um, 
like like I said, some of them that come in there, they have the mindset, oh, you just here for a paycheck. It's like, listen, if I was here for the paycheck, I'll be doing something different. Yeah, definitely. Because the paycheck is not nearly as much as you think it is. Right. Like, I'm here for you more than the money, honestly. I'm trying to think what I would do for just the paycheck. That's what I'm saying. It's not, <laughs> not Maybe much. work at a golf course That's and what just I'm saying. the balls. <laughs> exactly. Play basketball. If it's not ball, it's not much else we right. do for just a check. Right. So... You know they they don't understand that, but it, you keep going. So you know, absolutely, got and to. you've been successful at mm-hmm. that, and it, and it doesn't go mm-hmm. unnoticed. And I'm sure a lot of other people in the community see what you've been doing over the years. Yeah. Um, but I want to, you know obviously bring you on the show to have to bring light to what you've been doing. Oh, yeah, no doubt. A lot of people don't see success. You know, if I asked you right now, what does success look like to you? What would you say? I mean, there's. I mean, it's different for a lot of people, but I would say, you know, I'm talking to being, you, brother. <laughs> what does success helping look? helping the community, helping to improve the community, mm-hmm. right? Um, the entire community, you everybody know can see this, right? Yeah. What do you mean? What does it look like face. to you? You look like to me people, as, yo, as a okay, kid, look. a kid, right? A youth, is, right? Yes. That yeah. that was that was traumatized, right? Mm-hmm. They they've gone through that. Nah, they graduated I'm talking high to school. you, brother. Yeah. What do you mean? What does success look like to you? So it For looks me, like look. a high school graduate okay. going their way to college, Boom, there right? There we go. That's that's a that's, that's success. what success looks like to me. Yep. Especially like I said, but I also wanted to make, you know I wanted to add the fact that. You know the, that the youth, especially if they've had trauma yeah. in their life, because you know those youth, the percentages drop exponentially. For you know sure, what I'm saying? Yeah. Once that's happened to them, mm-hmm. like Shout them the graduating, um, <laughs> graduating high school, <laughs> going on to college, to TI, like you know what I'm <laughs> <laughs> graduating high school, going on to college. After that, is you know, is just not as common as if that hasn't happened to the youth. Right. So that's what success looks like for me. Yeah. You know what success used to look like for me? What's that? So. I used to picture like the guys on Wall Street, yeah, with, like suits, the on, suits, ties, on, yeah. shop shoes, big Benz. Well, not or the not car, even, not even, even the, the drivers. Car. No, they were sitting they was, down. They the, just just the look, just the look, just the Brooks Brothers suit, pinstripe, all that. Just sitting down on a park bench, reading the newspaper with their legs, with the legs crossed, yo, not worrying about nothing. They're nothing. not. They're not thinking about payday. That was success. They're not worried about it. I say, yo, when I get to that point, I know I'm successful. <laughs> that's, that's good. But I'm not there yet. <laughs> nah, we're not because I only do that when I'm tired. Yeah. <laughs> when I sit down from working, oh, I go man. and sit down. I'm like, man, man woo, that was a long day. Was a long it was day. successful. It was a successful day. Sometimes a successful day, not even yes. staying awake. <laughs> like you, yeah, you know like you said at the top of the show, man. I'm not. Sometimes I can't even keep my eyes open after yeah, a and, successful day. And you know, before we wrap it up, I just want to um, talk about the stuff that you know, things that touched us. We we lost some people over the years mm-hmm. that that's been real close to mm-hmm. us, and it, it wouldn't do it justice if we didn't bring them, especially us. Yeah, being, absolutely. You, you sent me a picture uh, of us in in. in we Tenth grade, 15, sophomore 16 year, sixteen years old, sophomore year, and and it really touched me when you sent it to me. Be, not so much, you know, the time or yeah. the vintage look of the picture. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. it's so crazy. I had a watch on. <laughs> I had a basketball. I had jersey. jean shorts on you with the basketball jersey. I had some jorts on. I was looking at the picture like I. I don't even want to send it, but I got to us, my guy. This you is had jean the memory was too crazy. I had shorts. jean shorts on. And I was like, and it was below your knees. I'm like, I, <laughs> I almost wanted to look at my pops. Like, what was, what were you thinking? How you let me? How did you let? How did you allow that? I don't even know what we was doing. We was like just posing because I had a watch on in well, the picture. That's what I'm saying. In a basketball I'm uniform. Not, I'm not sure. I know we had to send the picture in to the nationals because um for the for the rosters because we were going to national year. Yes. So we Detroit, had to send that. Showdown yeah, and Motown. we had to <laughs> we had to send the picture in along with the roster for the for the pamphlet. But um, so the picture had all of us on there. Yeah, you know we had a lot of friends. Mm-hmm. With me, what touched me the most, what, what just hit me, was I was in on my right and on my left were two brothers that we grew up with. Yeah, and they both passed away. Yeah. So, yeah, Antoine Key. Yep. And Ricky Martin. Ricky Martin. Ricky Martin, he had a heart condition that he passed away from. Yep. And, and Antoine Key as, as well. Yep. And they were good friends. Real close, real, real good. Real close to us. You know, Antoine was actually my best my best friend. So, yeah. you know, it, it was one of those things when I seen the picture, I was like, man. Mm-hmm. I hit you both ways. We it, it, it feel it's, good. It's, and that's, then it's a little down tick because, you know, you, you think about losing them. 
if we think about losing them, and it's like, you know, that's success in a way that we just made it to our age. Because yeah. there's a lot of people that are gone. Exactly. You know, even at the age that we are, mm-hmm. there's a lot of people that, that are, are gone. Still gone, yeah. You know, people just people don't they didn't make it to twenty five. Mm-hmm. That's like that's another thing, that's another point that that pushed me, you know, in the path that that, you know, I'm taking was losing some friends, you know, losing people in high school. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Um whether it was a, a health condition or whether it was just, you know, because they're caught in the streets, mm-hmm. you know, it's like they didn't they didn't have the support that I had. Right. So I want to be that support for as many of the youth as I can. And you know, just because you go a different path in life, or you look different, mm-hmm. or, you, or you do a different job, mm-hmm. doesn't mean that you're not parallel to each other in yeah, some kind of way. Exactly. You know, you can relate to this person. Your adversity can relate to this one. Your situation is not unique. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people need to uh, reach out to people, see if they can help them. If, if they see them down, pick them up. Yeah. You know, but understand that our situations are all, they're not unique. Mm-hmm. We're, we're similar in a lot of ways. Similar to many, many people and in a so, lot of ways. You know, our paths just remain straight, you know yeah. what I'm saying, for, for the most part. But I appreciate you coming on the show, my brother. Oh yeah, you got we gotta have you again. So, <laughs> you know I'll be back. You know, talk about this UMass low. <laughs> they're not I even gotta, the same. I gotta. They're D one now. Yeah, they're D one now. They're totally different. I program. still, I still bring my boys though. I, I bring somebody up. I don't know. Yeah. I don't not gonna say any names, but I bring they, they're all over. They're scattered, but. That's we'll, all right. We'll I'm, I'm sure they got some successful stories. They got. Oh, there's no, there's definitely a couple so, success stories. You know, you we'll bring have them on the back. show if we can. Um, but I appreciate you coming on. Oh, you know that. I know you're my guy. You know, Hundred same. grand. Absolutely. Uh, it's another episode of Underrated Success. <laughs> underrated success. Underrated. Underrated. Underrated success. Underrated success.